welcome. Nice to have you here today. So I think uh, something that is very important to mention uh, is that we often try to become perfect with this meditation, trying to adjust our lives so it becomes better, more perfect, more nice, more happy, and all that. Mm. And so we're constantly busy, we try to meditate, to fix ourselves. We call it letting go of our misery and letting go of our stress and so forth, but really we're not letting go of our stress at all. We're creating more stress, we're creating more trouble, more worries. So for many people meditation becomes some sort of extra worry, some sort of extra stress an extra layer of unnecessary, I don't know, worries and discipline and tension in life. So we develop this kind of relationship to meditation practice. We say things like, well, I still have to do my practice. I still have to do my prayers. I still, no, I didn't sit last week. You know, hmm, I should have done my meditation sessions, I know, but I didn't really do it. And this kind of guilt comes up, and <laughs> all this kind of stress, you know. Even around something that is supposed to be completely leading you beyond stress. Pointing the way to peace, not to more worries and more concerns and more tension in one's life. <coughs> Some people force themselves into a very uncomfortable posture for a long time and kind of becomes this kind of macho thing, you know, oh, I can sit still for an hour, I can sit still for 30 minutes. It's good to sit still, but it shouldn't become stressful to sit still. It shouldn't become just another kind of burden that we add to our already very burdensome life, to our very burdensome personalities. We just add another burden and we call it meditation or spiritual discipline or practice. I really want to point that out. This is this is very common also within myself. I see these tendencies. So many times I approach my practice as if it's something that, you know, I have to do and I should do. So there should be a lot of joy about your practice. It should be something um, nice. You sit down to enjoy yourself. You sit down to have a good time. That's where actually the good times come from in meditation. That's where all these uh, enlightened states and the release, the good feelings, all come from. They come from leaving yourself alone just for a little while. No, no need to do anything, no need to achieve anything, no need to become silent, no need to become peaceful and concentrated, no need to get samadhi, no need to get some sort of attainments, whatever it is. Because these attainments, these so-called attainments, they do not just, they do not come from pushing and pressuring yourself into this. They actually come from release. The whole Buddhist path is nothing but release in all his aspects. It is nothing but release. Releasing harmful actions, releasing harmful speech, releasing letting go of harmful thoughts, not following them, not buying into that, neither expressing anything nor suppressing anything. Simply leaving it alone. We have this attitude of constantly digging into things and identifying with things and trying and struggling, you know. But we see one emotion coming up in our meditation or in our day-to-day -day living, you know. There's this emotion and then it seems to be out of place. It's, I shouldn't feel unhappy, I shouldn't feel bad. 
I should constantly be feeling blissed out and happy. This is just another stress, isn't it? Just another pressure that we should be constantly feeling great. But we're human beings, right? And human beings feel a lot, many things. When someone criticizes you, you feel. If you try not to feel, you're stressed. But it's a fact that when someone criticizes you, there is tension in your heart. There is a feeling of rejection. Your hands are shaking. Your heart is pounding. You're feeling uncomfortable and awkward. That is a fact. And then, as a meditator, many people think, oh, I shouldn't feel like that. I've been meditating for a long time. I shouldn't have this emotion. They really miss the point. By they, I include myself. In that scenario also, I really miss the point. If I approach any sensation, any feeling, any emotion that arises during day-to-day -day life or in meditation practice, and with, with a sense of, yeah, it should not be there, it should not be like that. I'm basically rejecting truth. That's a big point. The Buddha has taught the four noble truths. The first noble truth is that there is stress. It's not like uh, the first noble truth is there shouldn't be stress. <laughs> you know. <coughs> the first noble truth is that there is stress. It's just most of us don't want to face it. We constantly try to be perfect. The untouchables. I'm a meditator. I'm not stressed. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm right. It's okay to be wrong. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being wrong, you know. It's okay to mess up. It's okay to feel awkward. It's all right. It's okay to get sick. It's okay to feel like, like shit. Pardon my language. But humans feel like shit sometimes, no? It's okay. You're fine. It's 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 all right to feel bad. There is no business for us there. If you feel bad, there's no business there. Nothing for you to do. And that's what's liberating you. You're not getting rid of your bad feeling. You're not trying to enhance it so you can feel a little bit more like some sort of marcher. You leave it alone. You recognize, ah, the first noble truth suffering. There is stress, all right. But you receive it with an openness. You're ready to receive. You're ready to open up to it. Oh, it's like this. That's okay. This little sentence is a very important sentence. It is like this. Puttathasa Bhikkhu, great Thai monk, philosopher, meditator, he um, was once asked by another great meditation master, Lopo Sumeto, was asked, you know, when you would be stranded on some desert island, all alone by yourself, and there's one thing that you can choose to have with you, what would that be? And Puttatasa Bhikkhu, he says, hmm, a piece of paper, a note, where it says, written on the piece of paper, it's just like this. <laughs> yeah. So maybe he finds a coconut and he might make it through another day. Well, it's like this. Or maybe he starves and he dies. There's absolutely no hope. No ship comes. Well, it's like this. 
But there is no rebellion against life. There is no rebellion against all these thousands of facets that life constantly shows to you. Isn't it the case? You, you go through life day by day, you look at yourself, you notice that there's thousands of variations of feeling angry. There's thousands of variations of feeling offended or just simply tense for no reason. There's nothing for you to do about it. Leave it alone. Let it go. That's what this famous letting go means. Letting go means that just leave it alone. Leave it there. It's okay. So we're trusting in intuitive awareness rather than trusting in doing something about it. Because the doing never ends. Doing leads to more doing. Activity leads to activity. Period. It doesn't lead to solutions. It leads to just activity. You look at human history, lots of activity. And so, it'll keep going like this. There will be more and more activity, but no solution or no final sort of happiness. Humanity is not an A to B thing. It's not a straight line. Like, we start off at some sort of stone age or like a monkey and then we end up in this kind of super blissful godlike state all of us so like this kind of linear development it's not like that it's more like cyclic it's very repetitive or sometimes we feel fantastic and then we feel terrible and then again wow wow fantastic and then terrible again <laughs> and some people stay in this terrible feeling for a good while and then they're shortly dipping up into fantastic and then back into terrible for a long, long time. Other people, they're constantly, constantly floating in fantastic and dip down shortly into terrible and then come back up to fantastic. It's like this. Sure, you can do st stuff about it. You can, you can kind of improve your thinking. You can be more grateful. You can bring in more kindness into your life, etc., etc. All of that is possible. So generally, you'll be floating more on the fantastic side. The more grateful you are, right, the nicer life appears. If you are more open to life's facts, the way life is, right, people die, people get old, people get sick, and it's okay, it's like this, you suffer less, you're less surprised by life. If you count your blessings every day you wake up, you'll be more happy. That is normal. Yes, but you will still suffer, you still get sick, you still get old, and you will still die. You will still subject to loss, still subject to uncomfortable encounters, criticism, you're still subject to doubts, worries, all of that is there too. It's just through skillful living, it's kind of suppressed. It's not really coming up often. You're like taking care of your garden in a good way so there is not so much weeds but lots of good plants and they grow well and so forth that is an option you can design your life in a good way however that's not the end goal of a spiritual path the end goal is not just to become a good gardener the end goal has nothing to do in fact with becoming no becoming no more becoming, no more trying. That is onward leading to an actual end, to an actual B state, from A to B. So that spiritual practice is that one thing that gives you an A to B experience, from suffering to peace. And it, that happens only when we learn to leave things alone. Particularly within ourselves. There is human interaction. Let's say someone criticizes you. Someone says, ah, oh, you're wrong there. How can you think like that? Ah, oh, that's silly. Whatever, you know. So someone says something to you like that. So you feel offended. Now what to do in that case, right? What to do with the offense? Well, nothing. 
receive it in kindness. Oh, there's offense. Offense is like this. It feels like this. Soften up around it. Leave it alone. See what happens. And after a while, the offense will fade. And then the next thing happens. Just wait. But usually we are not that kind of spacious already. So the offense comes and we tense up around it. What? Why did you say that? What do you mean I'm not right? Don't you see how this guy behaves? He's clearly mad. Don't you see that? And so we start arguing about things, right? Because we're tense. We're tensing up about it. We're tensing up about the idea like, I have to prove these people that I'm right. I have to prove, I have to show that I'm not wrong. How can they say that I'm wrong? How dare they say that I'm wrong? Right? <coughs> they don't even know me. And it becomes this huge thing. And the, the, the more we become tense around it, the bigger the issue. The more we contract around what just happened, the bigger the issue, the bigger the talk, the longer the wasted time, the wasted breath. We end up tired. Our energy is exhausted. We don't feel fresh. We don't feel good. It doesn't help. What actually helps in every circumstance is to be centered within silence inside, to be able to receive life in any way it comes. So if there's an emotion like feeling awkward, feeling mm, in, inadequate, feeling lesser than another person, comparing yourself with others, whatever there is in your mind, are you able to receive it? That's, that is this reception, that's important. And that softening around it, that's important. And that comes with the understanding that, wow, yes, of course, I'm a human being. There's awkwardness. Oh, yeah, sure. Totally forgot. <laughs> totally forgot. Ah, oh, there is anger. Ah, oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, I'm a human being. <laughs> and I don't have to express it. I don't have to swallow it and kind of get it out of the system. I don't have to do anything about it. That's the beauty of letting go. Oh, anger. Oh, okay. Not really my business. I don't have to go out there and disturb the anger. Just let it pass. I can actually even make friends with anger. It doesn't mean I'm running around like a mad guy punching people in the face because I made friends with anger. Uh, making friends with anger is the ultimate defeat to anger. Anger cannot handle friendship. Or it can handle it super nicely. You can also say it like this. It just immediately melts. It immediately melts in a friendly attitude. Oh, hello, anger. Welcome. Show me, show me what you need to show me. Oh, hello, awkwardness. So show me what you need to show me then. And then you learn like this. You know, you don't need a teacher for that. You don't need anyone teaching you about how many types of awkwardness there are and the definition of awkwardness and whatnot. You just look at it right away. There it is. You feel awkward. Good. No need for definitions. No need for divisions. No need for any philosophical blah blah. That it is. Awkwardness feels like this. Let's see how it feels like. Aren't you curious? You know, life's quite alright. It has all these kind of different emotions, highs, lows. 
in all of them we can just learn to soften up and leave it alone just let it come let it go receiving guests in Zen they say receiving guests without serving them tea just like that There's the, you sit there you receive the guests you don't serve them tea it's a very nice saying Whatever comes in, it comes in. Fine. Fine. So at the core, I find spiritual practice to be much like an observation of tension and release. In a very simple form. So, however you call the tension, if you want to call the tension depression or anger or jealousy, that's all tension. The heart becomes tense. That's what happens. As soon as it becomes tense, you notice, ah, it's tense. The tension, the, the tension feels exactly like that. Now, if I breathe in, there it is. If I breathe out, it's slightly changed. If I breathe in, it's again, it's slightly changed. If I breathe out, it's again, slightly changed. And then it dissolves. And then usually, when we see that it dissolves, we pick it up right away pick it up again. It's like, oh, it dissolved. Yeah, but seriously, I have to find a solution to this. And then it comes up again. And so we watch this cycle of reproducing the tension and letting go of tension until we learn that no one else around us can ever be made responsible for our own tension. It's not possible. You cannot point your finger to other people and say, you are giving me tension. Mm. Unfortunately, we can't do that. It's not according to truth. But the way I react or the, my attitude towards you is a tense attitude. And unfortunately, I have not so much mindfulness, so the tense attitude rules me. So we don't really see what's going on. So it requires this mindfulness, it requires this attention that looks back at yourself kindly for noticing, ah, there is tension, there is stress, the first noble truth. Then what's the cause of it? What's causing stress? Why? Why is there tension? Why are we tensing up? The answer is because we have an agenda. We are approaching stuff with an agenda. We want stuff or we don't want stuff. So an emotion arises and you either want to increase it or you want it to go away. You're not just simply receiving it as it is, without agenda. You need something. Ooh, that feeling, I don't like it. It should go away. What can I do to make it go away? So we visit all kinds of gurus and read all kinds of books and watch all kinds of YouTube clips to, to just see how to fix it, you know but it will fix itself as soon as you put it down. It's that simple. And every but means picking it up again. Yeah, yeah, I do, I see what you mean, but. There you go, you pick it up again. Just leave it be and enjoy your life. Yeah, but how can I enjoy my life if this and that and blah, 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 and we go back to it. We don't trust awareness. We don't trust kindness yet. We don't trust the, the knowing quality of the heart. The only thing we actually do or trust and do know in life is doing activity, doing stuff, getting rid of, accomplishing, trying, accumulating you know, struggling, and that's what we know. These, these are the kinds of things that are familiar to us, familiar to Ren. Doing. Having a direction, right? Feeling that we are going towards something gives us some hope, it gives us a good feeling, gives us a feeling of purpose. If anyone asks you, you know, what are you doing in your life? Well, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer. 
I'm a meditation teacher, or people are okay with that. It's like, okay, ah, yeah, now I know who you are because I know you're doing. I know your activity state. So, ah, that seems to be you then. So you're a doctor, ah. I see. It gives people a bit of a hard time if someone asks you, and what are you doing? And you answer, nothing. I do nothing. What do you mean, nothing? You do nothing. You know. Sure, I mean, we don't, we don't talk with people like this, but just a fun conversation. If you just imagine, you would answer that. If someone asks you, and what do you do? And you say, nothing. No, no, I mean your job. Well, what are you doing? Beta? Nothing. And right now, you're eating your food, right? No. I'm not doing anything. I'm not digesting. I'm not breathing. I'm not making my heart pump. Most of the time, I don't even make the fork move up to my lips because I'm busy talking with you. I don't even notice the fork coming up to my lips and putting noodles into my mouth. <laughs> I don't even notice that how the noodles taste, but the teeth chew. I'm not chewing. The teeth are chewing. The body is doing its stuff, right? So, yeah, I can be kind of absent-minded and talk about politics. And I totally forget that they're noodles and the mouth is chewing them and then they're swallowing and digesting. I don't know. That's how it works, right? So we don't really have to be doing something actively for it to work. Right now, also, yeah, Toby, but you're talking right now. No, I'm not. There is talking, yes. I agree, there is some talking going on. <laughs> but I'm here as a listener, too. So what, what am I doing? Am I listening or am I talking right now? I hear my own voice, like you're hearing it. I'm not forming the words. I haven't put the words into my mind either. I'm not preparing the teachings or the talks, you know, like having a perfect alignment of words and mimics and gestures, all perfectly matching up for this evening, for every minute and every second of the talk. It's all planned out. It doesn't, there's no need to do that. Life is kind of very effortless. And in it, it's, there is this beauty, you know. And that's exactly what the mystics discover. <gasps> wow! I'm not needed. <laughs> I'm not, oh, I'm not required. Life is enough. It doesn't really need me to run my liver. <coughs> it doesn't need me to run the body. It doesn't need me to run emotions. They arise and pass according to circumstances. If there's criticism, whoop, there is an awkward feeling. Automatic. It's not like, oh, someone criticized me. Shouldn't I be feeling awkward? How am I going to do this awkwardness? Wait a second, wait a second. Doing awkwardness. How can you do this, you know? <laughs> it's impossible. It's just so natural. That's all the Buddha needs us to look at. So natural. Oh, awkwardness. All right, what's next? <laughs> But instead, we take things really seriously, you know. <gasps> Awkwardness. Oh, no. What a failure I am. I shouldn't feel awkward. I'm an adult. I'm the boss. I shouldn't be awkward. We're denying truth. And we go to great lengths sometimes at denying truth. Pretending or holding up a pretense. And that's so stressful in life, isn't it? It's so stressful for me, for example, to hold up the pretense that I'm some sort of meditation teacher and all that stuff that goes with that pretense. I don't give myself that stress. I did for a long time and it's just... It's funny, you know, looking back at it, it's just pointless. I'm trying to be some sort of, you know, like looking peaceful and talking only wise things and... It's doesn't make any sense. No. It's punishment, really. And then, you know, I have to always be, when I'm outside on streets, I, I think it was like a few months ago, I was like walking through Lotus, Tesco Lotus, and I had an ice cream in my hand. 
a soft ice cream. I was walking around with this ice cream, like kind of mindlessly, uh, ice cream, you know, eating ice cream, just m not being mindful in that moment. And then suddenly there comes this uh, brilliant godlike figure towards me, of whom I know he's a, he is an awesome practitioner of martial arts and and meditator himself. And so he comes and he approaches me and he sees me with the ice cream. And I'm like, damn it, I messed up. He sees me eating ice cream, you know. And he himself, he would never eat ice cream. And then there's all this kind of really twisted thinking comes up. You know, like, oh, yeah, I, you know, and then the ice cream was all over my beard, you know. I had it all in my beard, the ice cream. And I was like, oh, my God, I look so silly, you know. I, I don't look like a meditation master. I have ice cream in my beard. I walk through Tesco Lotus like this kind of consumer center, you know, everywhere, like blinking lights and stuff, not being mindful at all. Wow. And that is exactly what stress means, right? You're trying to pretend. And holding up this kind of Toby image, that's what's stressful. What does it mean to be Toby? Well, it means just the same as for you, you know, like being yourself. There's emotions, there's feelings, there's everything. You need to brush your teeth in the morning? Yeah, me too. Yes. You're hungry sometimes? Yeah, me too. Just normal. Very normal. It's very normal, very ordinary. When I just started out on the on the path of meditation, then I was surrounded by all these kind of uh, great masters. And there were always stories in the monastery, stories told about the ancient masters, like 16th century masters. And... 15th century masters and the masters that lived with Buddha and Buddha himself the master and everyone was like so masterful and when these masters were born there were rainbows all over the sky like in every direction nine rainbows and uh, it was winter time but there were cherry blossoms and the birds were chirping and singing and it's all so fantastic and amazing and here I am and my knee hurts and I feel bored, and I fall asleep in the teachings, and all that stuff, you know. And I, how can you help but feel so inadequate and such a loser? And then how do I compensate? Well, I look up to the master and go like, this is my master. <laughs> and it's like, wow, you know, this master. And then oh, he looked at me, oh, and then it makes your heart pound, you know. And then every gesture of your master kind of means something, you know. Oh, wow, I really messed up right now, or, ooh, this, this means I did well. And it becomes this huge tension around nothingness. It doesn't help anyone. It didn't help me at all. I did it for long enough. It didn't help at all. All it did is was making me very awkward and tense. <laughs> trying to be perfect all the time, you know, and always comparing myself to these great masters of the 16th century. And then I look at myself and, you know, yeah, of course, you know, I'm nowhere, I'm nothing, I'm a no one. I, I, could, I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't enjoy myself at all because, you know, I'm nothing. I didn't even start on the spiritual path. I never had a feeling that I, any, that I didn't have any accomplishments or that I started out or anything because everyone around me was just so damn glorious, you know. And I'm, I wasn't. <laughs> no. And so that carries on. It's a deep, deep, deeply rooted pattern. And it carries on. And it's still there. However, right now, it's not that pervasive anymore. I notice it. When it comes up, I'm like, oh, yeah, hello, all right. Do whatever you need to do. Uh, it doesn't do me any harm anymore. But before, it did a lot. It made me feel seriously unhappy about myself. You don't have to buy into these ideas. You can also simply relax and let go. The formula of practice, as I've learned it from my own teacher, is see, no, let go. We keep looking at ourselves with mindfulness. We're present. All the magic only happens now, always.
doesn't happen later, it doesn't happen before. So you need to learn to become a bit more present. In this present space, you see things as they are. And as you see as they are, you leave them alone. You just put them down. There's no need to do anything about it. They arise by themselves, they pass by themselves. Keep reminding yourself of this. Look right there, this emotion too, it comes to go. And this illness too, it comes to go. And this knee pain too, it comes to go. And this life too, it comes to go. And this spouse too, it comes to go. Everything just comes to go. So relax. Not a big deal. Unless you're holding on to stuff, then it's a big deal. Then we feel unhappy, intense. So embrace yourself with your awkwardness and your negative sensations and your pains and all that. It's fine. You're fine. You're fine. Guaranteed. You're okay. You're doing just nicely. Just well. We all need a little less of a critic inside that is so harsh and tyrannical, constantly looking down upon the smallest little breath that you made wrong and needs to be corrected and put in order. Next time I'm going to breathe deeper. Just leave yourself alone, just for a little while, and you will have a great meditation time. You will enjoy yourself as you're supposed to enjoy yourself. Take out the manager. Leave the witness there. No more managing needed. You don't need to manage yourself anymore. Not in meditation. You don't need to manage yourself at all. There are times when there is management required, but not during meditation at all. It's all about letting go, letting go of future and past, letting go of inner talk, letting go of motion in the mind, attention, motion, letting go of blurry fogginess. And all that is revealed after letting go is more and more quietude, more and more joy naturally kind of when you let go of all the stuff there is joy that's left naturally you put a heavy bag down it feels good and you didn't have to produce the good feeling it comes because you put stuff down you put down future and past there's a good feeling if you put down inner chatter and that's a big one there's an even better feeling in that space you can really rest, really restore, really enjoy yourself. So maintain that through your day-to-day -day life. Maintain only that. This inner quietude, this silence. This, you can call it eye of a storm, maybe. It's totally quiet. Everything spins around it. But there is restfulness inside. You can discover it by doing this meditation without stress, not as another burden. Are there any questions? All right. I think time to stop for today. Thank you very much for coming. Have a good week.